to Kizar to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. It is. You know, we have an interesting conversation because we've been talking about that running back room. We have. And especially since Wilson Jr. got hurt, the yeah. question has been, who's who's going to you know get the main snaps for this team? You know, it, who's it going to be? Who, who's going to do it? You know what I think we're doing? We're sleeping on somebody. Are we? Yeah, we're sleeping on Jamichael Hasty. Good old Tasty Hasty. He's a, he's a pretty talented guy. Yeah, that one of the undrafted guys that Kyle Shanahan has brought in, and look, I think part of the reason why we've been sleeping on him so much is because they've brought in pieces. They drafted the two running backs in Elijah Mitchell and Trey Sermon, right? They went out and signed Wayne Gallman. Yep. All right, in free agency, so there's questions there. There's questions, but he wasn't the first casualty for running backs being cut. They got rid of uh, Wa- Walter. Walter first. Austin Walter was the first guy to go off the list, so he's obviously not the first guy on the chopping block. Um, and he did have some moments last year. He had some flashes in the pan, especially when the injuries started mounting and piling up, and they were just relying really on Jeff Wilson Jr. and really needed a change of pace speed guy. Jamichael Acey came in and looked really, really good in the few weeks that he was playing. Um, started getting some touches, looked good at coming out of the backfield, catching the ball as well. So a full season, an off season to develop, and training camp, which is going to help him, it's not going to hurt him. Uh, maybe we are. Maybe we haven't given this guy enough credit, and maybe we're not diving into this enough. Well, I know we watched when we watched film last year. One of the first things we did was put the 49ers must protect this guy. Um, we were worried about him on the, you know, going back to the practice squad and just being taken because I guess teams were calling right away, as well they should, because when he got out there, he looked dynamic. Um, he was making good reads. His, his jump cuts are fantastic. One cut and go. Um, he looked really good, and he's only looked better since he came to OTAs. Um, he's in great shape. He looks bigger, stronger. Um, I don't know if he's faster. I think that's the one area of weakness. He's not, you know, ultimately a four-three guy. Like I think if he was, he would be dynamic. Um, but he's a very good player with a lot of skills. And so there is a question. I think we need to consider him because I think a lot of times we're looking at this is that the fact that they drafted two guys this year, they signed Gallman, and then they have Moser automatically. Hasty's the guy out. But maybe Hasty's not. Maybe we need to take a look at this and think, well, maybe he's just going to beat these guys out because he does have, you know, the experience of playing on this team for one year. He understands the offense. That should put him a little bit ahead of Elijah Mitchell and Wayne Goldman. I know Goldman's a different style of running back, but I think this guy could prove to be somewhat of a third down option. So I wonder if the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan especially are ready to move off of him. Look, at the end of the day for Jermichael Hasty, I think the big thing is the receiving aspect. If he can grow in the receiving game, he had eight targets last year, caught seven of those balls for 43 yards. So he's averaging almost seven, eight yards a catch, which is great for a running back. Um, but if he can improve as a receiver and become a legitimate third down back, we can have him in there. He can pick up blitzes, right? If you need him to, if you want to max protect, or you can send him out on routes out of the backfield or line him out, line him up out in space in the slot, then he has a very, very good chance of being the guy on third downs that the Niners turn to. Uh, and, he, and like you said, he has the heads up advantage in that he's played in the system for a year already and had game experience. So we've already seen some of the things that he can do. Is he an every down back? No. Is he a guy that you can hand the ball off to 15, 20 times a game? No. But can you rely on him for 10 touches? 10 solid touches with production? 100%. Absolutely you can. And if those touches are mix, are mixture of out of the backfield handoffs, outside zone runs, traps, things of that nature... And then routes in space, man, I'll tell you what, it'll be really, really hard to not keep him on the roster. Yeah, and I think, you know, Elijah Mitchell being a sixth round pick, I don't think that secures him a spot. Mm -mm. I think anytime you get into that sixth, seventh round, um, there are possibilities that you could get, you know, cut or moved. I think you want to have value there, but that's the same thing we're looking at with Charlie Warner as a sixth round pick that if you don't live up to expectations, you're going to be gone. Quick. And you can't, you know, hold on to a guy just because you think he could be something down the road if you already have somebody that is something right now. Yep. Um, but there is a question about Wayne Gallman because maybe Elijah Mitchell is a faster version of Wayne Gallman. And if that is the case and he's able to translate his game to the NFL game and he's able to still do the one cut and run 
run physical like he did in college, which means break a lot of tackles, and still have a 4-3 speed. Um, getting to that 209, 210 weight is what I think he's going for, is what he said. So he he could actually be the one that causes Gallman to be gone, and maybe Hasty isn't on the outside looking in, but is actually securing one of those spots. Um, so that'll be interesting. Now, that opens up a whole bunch of questions once Wilson comes back, because we know Wilson's going to come back off the pup list at some point. At some point. But one of these guys could be injured. You need that depth. So the, it's going to be curious what the battle is. I don't think it's as straightforward as initially thought. I don't think those four guys are you know automatically in. I think Mostert and Sermon 100% are in. Yeah. But I think those other three are battling for those two spots. And I think it's more open than I think even I wanted to admit early on. It's definitely more open than I wanted to admit early on because I was uh, I was under the impression that it was going to be Elijah Mitchell and Gallman battling it out for that last spot, and that just unfortunately for Hasty, it's just circumstance, mm -hmm. right? Healthy Jeff Wilson Jr. You go out and get Trey Sermon. The Niners have just made just made too many moves that it's right. just, it's so it's, it's going to be too hard for you to to come back from with Jeff Wilson going down though. That door is kicked wide open, mm -hmm. and no longer is Jeff Will is not not Jeff Wilson, but no longer is Jermichael Hasty having to battle it out with four different guys. He's just got to go after two. And if you're telling me right now with 100 certainty, having not watched any of Elijah Mitchell in the system, that Jermichael Hasty's or uh, that Jermichael Hasty isn't a better fit in the system than Elijah Mitchell, I gotta call Poppycock on that. I don't I don't buy it for a second. Um, there's no proof to that being the case he looked great last year he's only looked better so far in otas don't get me wrong elijah mitchell has looked good mm -hmm. but michael ac has already built on what he did last year so far if he's building and getting better how can you cut him i don't know if you can you can't expect him to get to the practice squad if you cut him no he'll he'll, he'll get picked up by somebody um if i was the rams this is somebody i would go after 100 percent. the seahawks somebody i would go after um, so, I mean, Arizona, they could use this guy in a big way and mm -hmm. he could be a big player. So you have to be fearful and worried about giving up a talent like this. He has a lot of potential. And I think that the 49ers luckily get to see him in preseason this year. They not only get to see training camp, but he will get his first preseason, which is going to be a conversation for all the guys that were rookies last year, is now we get to see them in preseason going against players with like development, you know, guys who are still developing um, as players in the NFL and still developing in their second year. So that's going to be fun to watch. Um, so can he show up at big time in camp? Yes. Can he show up big time in the preseason? Yes. And that ultimately can help him make the team because I think they do like what Gallman presents. Mm -hmm. And Gallman is intriguing to the fact that he could fill in for Wilson Jr. as far as that role. But if Elijah Mitchell steps on the scene and he does those things too, but at a better rate than Gallman, you might think about, you know what? This guy is interchangeable with what Gallman does. Hasty does something different than the other guys. So let's keep him because I'd rather have four unique individuals that do different things that I can play in different ways than to keep two guys that are more similar. Correct. And so that is going to be the question. Now, if for some reason that Mitchell doesn't develop the way that they're hoping, there is a possibility Hasty gets cut and they keep Mitchell just because they think he can be something great, um, which I think would be the worst case scenario because you don't want to keep somebody that can't contribute big hopefully he can because i think he has a lot of potential so that's going to be a fun fun battle to watch um and you know what who comes out ahead that is going to be crazy because i have no idea right now going into this i don't i think we have been sleeping on hasty i think a lot of people have been sleeping on hasty and hasty deserves for everyone to wake up and take notice that he is a very good player that has a potential to make this team undrafted free agent so it is an uphill battle but so is raheem Mostert. so was jeff wilson jr Yep, 100%. And listen, Shanahan has shown what he can do with undrafted talent. So Jermichael Hasty might hold a special place in Shanahan's heart, I guess is the best way to put it, right? Like this just might be a guy, a project guy that he doesn't want to move off of. Um, and you know what? If he proves it and earns it and he's going to have every opportunity to, by all means, I would rather roll. I, I wouldn't say I'd rather roll with, but I'm willing to give Shanahan some leeway on the undrafted guys that he's brought in because he's hit on quite a few of them. Uh, Raheem Mostert yeah. alone earns him a couple passes on missing on some undrafted talent and taking chances on undrafted guys. So listen, if he builds in this offseason OTA period, if he builds in preseason, man, Elijah Mitchell, good luck because you you are going to be the one who has the uphill battle. And Jermichael Hasty will be inserting himself comfortably, potentially into a three into a three man rotation early on in the year with Jeff Wilson out. Um, but he does have to prove it, and that is by no means an easy task. It's not, and that's the that's the real question is. 
can he prove it in preseason? Will he get to. enough carries to prove that he is, you know, a legit running back in this league? Um, you're right. Seventh round picks. I mean, uh, undrafted free agents, not seventh round picks. Undrafted free agents have been huge for Shanahan. They have. Mostert was there, but 100% they developed him. Wilson Jr., they brought in. Matt Breida, they brought in. Those were huge hits. Hasty is just the, the next in line for that. So I think they will give him every opportunity. And that's the one thing about the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan. It don't matter where you came from, where you were drafted. Nobody gets special privileges. You get out there and you earn your spot. And if you're the best, you're going to make it. I would say that this comes down to Hasty versus Gallman for that fourth spot. But I, I think that right now, Hasty's got an equal footing with Gallman because I think both of them do something different. And I think Gallman might match up with Elijah Mitchell, which could end up hurting him. That's why I put them on equal footing. Listen, I don't disagree with you there. Let us know what you think down below right now in that comment section. Have you been sleeping on Jermichael Hasty? Are we all sleeping on Jermichael Hasty? Do we all need to wake up mm -hmm. and take notice and take note before this guy climbs onto the roster and we don't even realize it? And who knows, maybe even blows up. That might be a little over the line. But let us know about it down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share it also with your other 49ers fans in the NFC West. Let them know they need to wake up because Jermichael Hasty may be coming for them sometime soon in the near future, especially in the preseason. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, because as you can see, we are getting so, so close to 1,000. Yeah, join the conversation. Talk to us about Jermichael Hasty. What you think about him? What you think about this running back room? Who is going to make this roster? Those are all the big questions that we got. A lot of fun questions about 49ers season. Um, looking into this is one of the biggest ones because I think after last year, all of us thought Joe Michael Hasty was a, sh a shoe in to make this roster. Mm -hmm. And now with the addition of these two rookie running backs and Wing Allman, that puts a you know a shroud of doubt onto it. So I am curious what people think. I know what I think, but I want to hear what people think so I can have a conversation with them because that's the fun. That's the best part of this channel. That's the best part of just football in general, the conversation with you, the fans, and most importantly, the Cutback crew. Yeah. We love y'all crew. And until next time, you stay safe. Remember the right way is, is always the 49ers way. You know, we have a, a certain guy here with us who wants to let you know about an episode coming, coming out uh, this Thursday, don't we, John? This is John Chapman with the 49ers Rush Podcast. I'm going to be joining two handsome fellows. The 49ers Cutback episode Thursday. So what do you do it? Thursday, you got to come hang out with us. Let's talk some 49ers. It's right. You heard it from John Chapman himself of Rush Podcast. We got a nice conversation and discussion with him coming up Thursday. You don't want to miss that episode. It's going to be a lot of fun.